Lucy Lesser has never liked vegetables. Tomatoes, broccoli, salad, none of that was for her. I actually grew up my entire life thinking that tomatoes were absolutely disgusting, um, mostly because I was, you know, getting um, mushy, kind of unflavorful ones. And once I finally tasted, uh, like, a homegrown tomato, I was like, oh my gosh, this tastes amazing. Now that the coronavirus pandemic is making it harder to get fresh produce, Lesser is relishing the garden she has created in her apartment. Every square centimeter is used for some agricultural purpose, be it growing sprouts or lettuce. And her backyard is a vegetarian's dream. Rows of kale and garlic grow alongside strawberries, mint and other herbs. She even has a fig tree. Lavender. There's peppermint. More strawberries. Like many others, Lesser lost her job due to the coronavirus outbreak. Since mid-March, she's been setting sprouts in little cardboard boxes outside her home, offering them for free. On the first day, people took 150 of them. In a week, that number doubled. She's hoping her neighbors will use them to start gardens and stay home more. I'm trying to think of ways to help other people do that. I think right now, it feels like going to a supermarket, it, even if they have all the food you want to buy, um, nobody wants to be exposed to this virus. And I think staying home as much as possible is key. Uh, so I think people are also looking for ways to be self-sufficient. I've gotten um, messages from people who are starting roof gardens, who are starting in cooperative gardens with their buildings. I like to grow a lot of herbs because they're generally pretty expensive if you buy them. And they're good to stretch your meals and make uh, things taste better, you know. Um, so, but, you know, tomatoes are easy to grow, um, peppers are easy to grow. Marcel Van Oyen is CEO of the nonprofit called Grow New York City. For three decades, it's encouraged New Yorkers to grow their own gardens. The group used to turn abandoned parking lots into gardens, but today, volunteers spend much of their time delivering vegetables to those in need. Thousands of boxes in the communities that are really hard hit where people are you know, having difficulty accessing produce and also um, are suffering economically and can't afford to, to buy their own. Andrew Faust, owner of the Center for Bioregional Living, teaches people to live in harmony with nature. His center, located in the north of New York City, grows a variety of organic fruits and vegetables. He says that the pandemic brought to light the many mistakes in planning. You want to have food banks, places where they've thought about, like, many, you know, at least many months, ideally, at the very minimum a month or two, of food for people within a certain neighborhood radius. A concrete New York City skyline is getting a bit of green thanks to vegetable patches that have now claimed their place amid lounging chairs and sun umbrellas. For Dmitry Vershinin in New York, NRI's. VOA News.